Now, California's descent into total madness just reached, well, dizzying new depths. Horace Cooper and Kira Davis respond to this reparations push that's now happening there. Stay there. In the early 1900s, advertising campaigns showed California as an oasis. L.A. was described as our Italy and the home of sun-kissed skies of glory. By the 1960s, it was considered a true American paradise. Now, remember, it was California where they set the iconic 60s and 70s show, The Brady Bunch, because that was classic Americana. It was a place to raise a family, to send kids to good public schools. It was beautiful, and it was safe. And, of course, it was where everyone was surfing USA. In San Francisco, it wasn't just the city by the bay. It was so beautiful and clean, it was called the Paris of the West. But look at the California cities today, and you see a dramatic and depressing change. More people are homeless, of course, and living in homeless shelters. And this is than ever before in California's history, a whopping 173,000. But even that number underestimates the problem. The place is also teeming with debt. Its local governments are in the red to the tune of almost $1.6 trillion. Now, for some perspective here, the discretionary budget of the entire United States was $1.6 trillion in fiscal year 2021. Now, it's so bad that roughly 25% of the nation's housing shortage right now is attributable to California. And the middle class there? Oh, it's getting absolutely crushed. The gap between high- and low-income families in California is among the biggest in the nation. Families at the top of the income distribution earned 11 times more than families at the bottom. So with the Golden State's decline only accelerating, you might wonder what their elected leaders have been up to. Well, I'll tell you. Grievance giveaways. People have stepped up and done so much to get us to a point where the mayor of San Francisco can provide $2 million to provide universal income to transgender individuals in our city. Universal income to transgender individuals. Last month, Mayor London Breed's dream became a reality. Ka-ching! Now, this is a transition into insolvency, if you ask me. And while transgenders get universal income, California students just get the shaft. Test scores released two months ago show that only 47% of California students met English language standards, while a dismal 33% met the math standards. Now, some of that is because of COVID. Those are the lockdowns courtesy of Gavin Newsom. And you might wonder what the school board's answer to turning around this dismal performance is. Well, their answer is lowering standards. The East, Allo, East Palo Alto excuse me, School District just hired a diversity consultant for a cool $50,000. Oh, he must be very smart. I had a training. Um, uh, the title of the training is Dismantling White Supremacy Culture in Schools. Um, and the, the subtitle is, you know, how do we create anti-racist schooling, right? Education, that's the idea. But it's not just the diversity racket in the schools. During the height of the pandemic, while his residents were locked down and he was out at the French Laundry, California Governor Newsom signed legislation creating a reparations committee. I know the importance of reparations. I know the importance of history, of getting our information correct, and basically beginning to move California forward. AB 3121, um, Dr. Weber, your bill, and we'll just start here by signing this. Done deal. They delivered the first of their recommendations, that descendants of slaves in the state be compensated $223,000 each for housing discrimination. Now, the total cost, and mind you, this is only one of the things they're going to compensate for of all the five they highlighted. It would cost, just for housing, around $569 billion. That's no big deal. It's only more than California's expenditures for all of 2021. Well, this is obvious where this is all leading. California is fast becoming home 
to just an elite class of the super rich, people like the Kardashians, Steven Spielberg, Mark Zuckerberg, with everyone else living off the crumbs in the lower tier, the ones who are really affected by growing crime, homelessness, and hopelessness. It's a beautiful state, California is, but it has an ugly reality, a middle class under siege and declining quality of life for most people who can't afford anything else. Everyone but the wildly wealthy suffers, not just because of the left's bad policies, but because of their bad intentions. Joining me now, Horace Cooper, Project 21, chairman and author of the forthcoming book, Put Y'all Back in Chains, and Kyra Davis, editor-at-large of Red State and host of the Just Listen to Yourself podcast. All right, Horace, let's start with you. Is any of this really about compensating individuals for wrongdoing of the past, or is something else going on here? Good evening, Laura. Um, this is really sad that the attempt to manipulate the political cycle in the state has reached the point where openly illegal and unconstitutional activities or policies are being undertaken. One would have thought that in uh, California, the black support for progressives and their policies have been so locked down that these kind of blatant attempts wouldn't be necessary. This is quite revealing that the misery that the woke agenda has created in the state, as you outlined in the opening, destroying one of our major treasures, the state of California, <coughs> excuse me, now Californians who are black can't even be counted to continue supporting without this attempt at an illegal and unconstitutional bid to buy support. Kara, I know this is early, but what's the reaction inside the state? Do you think this would be a very popular measure statewide? No, it's unaffordable. The, I predict that the same thing that happened to universal health care will happen to this. Universal health care has been passed three times in this state, but it's been rejected every time. It's, it's $1 trillion. It's literally unaffordable. We're going to see the same thing with this. A half a trillion dollars just at the start. No, this is really, and, and I think it's really important to keep in mind that the committee actually asked Newsom for an extension so they could keep debating this. They weren't through. There's been a lot of internal debate and argument. This committee is not united, by the way, and neither are all black people in California on who constitutes the makeup of who will get compensated. Um, so they asked for an extension, and Newsom rejected that extension. They wanted the extension until mm. 2024. Why do you think Newsom rejected their ability to add even more things in there? Because Newsom knows he's running for president at some point, and he wants to run on this. All of this is just political posturing. And Carrie, you hit the nail on the head. This is much as much about Newsom's running for president as it is about anything else. He wants to solidify, wrap up that black vote, and that's what it is. Kira and Horace, have a great weekend. Thank you.